بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful We praise Him, we praise Allah And we send blessings upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam His family, his companions and those who follow him We would like to continue our journey with this chapter of the Qur'an in Hujarat with studying the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reflecting, reflecting upon some of the verses and trying to derive some of the lessons that will benefit us in this life and in the hereafter bi ta'ala. In the previous session, we spoke about the importance of verifying information and being sure about what we spread and what we tell people because of the damage that we could cause and the harm that we could cause. And we also spoke about the bounty and the favor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, He blessed the Sahaba with, meaning the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being among them and how Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala He made faith something beloved to them and He beautified, beautified it in their chests and He made disbelief and disobedience and evil deeds something that's disliked to them and uh, we said that this was a bounty and a grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he said fadlan min Allah wa ni'mah wallahu alimun hakim Allah is knowing and he is wise Allah knows and he is wise he has wisdom what he decrees and what he legislates so this knowledge is not only knowledge but it's knowledge which is based on wisdom as well and we mentioned also the importance of reflecting upon the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these verses and many other verses end with. As the scholars of tafsir, such as Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Sa'di, has mentioned in one of his books, the connection or one of the principles of tafsir is that the end of the verses or the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the verse are related to these verses. So when we read the Quran, we should try to see that connection, how they relate. In these verses, in the coming verses, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا These verses are speaking about disputes, fighting that may happen between the believers and how we should deal with it. Because human beings are human beings, it may be that they may fall into some type of mistakes or they may have some conflict or disputes which may end up with them fighting. So how do we deal with this? Do we encourage them, motivate them to do more, support them in their wrongdoings or should we make peace between them and try to reconcile? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, He instructs us by saying, When طَائِفَتَانْ مِنَ اقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا bring peace among them or between them. And we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls both of them mu'mineen, believers, even though one is wrong, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addresses them or he calls both of them mu'mineen. And then he says, فَإِنْ بَغَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى If one of them oppresses the other one, transgresses the limits, what do we do? فَقَاتِلُ الَّتِي تَبْغِي Fight the one, the oppressing one, the one who oppresses the other group, fight them until they come back to the right way. Come back to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So our obligation is to prevent those who oppress their brothers or their sisters from oppressing them. And that's, their, that's our obligation, one of the rights they have upon us. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Unsur akhaka wa Support your brother when he's the oppressor or he's being oppressed. Even in both cases. So the Sahaba understood when he's being oppressed, it's clear. 
you know, to support, defend the person, protect them. However, they're wondering how can we support a person who's oppressor? So the Prophet said, what? Oh, you prevent him from oppressing others or from being the oppressor. So in this case, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, what? If we should bring peace or make peace between them, if they fight, and then after bringing peace or making peace between them, if one of them goes back to oppressing the other one, then what? We fight it until they come back to the truth or to the right path. And if they come back, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What? Bring them back or reconcile between them and be what? Just and fair. For indeed, Inna Allah yuhibbul muqsitin. And this is a reminder that when we differ or we are part of the, or we are peacemakers or whatever may, the case may be, that we don't take sides because that may happen. It may be that we want to bring both sides together. However, we may be inclined or we may have an inclination to one of the parties, one of the sides, for whatever reason. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us to what? When we do so, to be, do it with adil to be fair and to be just. For indeed, Allah loves those who are fair and those who are just. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds us of the fact that what? The believers are brothers. So reconcile, bring the peace between your brothers. Why? Because this is what the brotherhood necessitates. Being a brother means that you want good for people. You want for them what you want for yourself. Prophet ﷺ told us what? That none of you are true believers. None of you is a true believer until he loves for himself what he loves for his brother. So one of the rights that we have upon one another is what? to want good for us, for our brothers and sisters. This is one of the rights, one of the, our responsibilities. So if it happens that they dispute or they fight, it's upon us to interfere, to try to establish justice. It has nothing to do with what some people may say, mind your business or it's not your concern. Rather, it is the concern of the community. Of course, according to a person's authority and their ability. Every case is different, every situation is different. However, that's one of the rights that we have over one another. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these two verses mentions or guides us to how to deal with these problems or with fighting if it happens and reminds us of what this brotherhood necessitates or what it requires. It requires for us to be just and fair because the believer is nothing but brothers. The result of this brotherhood is what? That we make peace between them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He ends the verse by saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commands us to what? Fear Him, to be conscious of Him, so that we may receive what? Mercy. So this is a reminder of us to be merciful with our brothers, with our sisters, and that this is a requirement, this is one of the rights that they have upon us, to be merciful and to what be conscious and to be remindful or to be reminded that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us what we do and how we deal with one another Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us so these two verses are very important of how to deal with one another a reminder of the brotherhood in al-islam this bond which is very important that maybe some of us do not understand, or maybe we may, we may need to be reminded of this every now and then because we forget. So we find in these verses the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we dispute or if two groups fight one another, how to deal with it and, how sh- and what we should do or what's required from us. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to do that which is right in such cases, for indeed, it's difficult in many cases to be just and fair, especially if one of the sides, one of the groups are related to you or you like one of them, whatever the case may be. 
but we should be reminded of these verses and the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us and this is one of the obligations that we have upon one another even if it's against our family even if it's against ourselves as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this is closest or this is closer to righteousness in other verses he says even if it's against yourselves or your family or your parents even طيب. Uh, so this is a command and obligation that we have that we must fulfill. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to doing that which is good, to fulfilling these obligations, to give us tawfiq in doing so, to bring the hearts of the believers together, to remove the hatred and whatever things that negate or they go against establishing this brotherhood. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ